So, good buddy. morning, GMAC. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Good. Happy almost New Year. Last day of 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people out there in Talk Tennis have uh, been asking for a while to hear more from you. And Great. So, uh, I saw you this morning. I thought, hey, we can deliver on that. Yeah. What, what do you want to talk about? Well, you know, it's. Um, I think it's actually the kickoff day for the Southern Senior Men's. Yes, they actually they uh, they start Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. It's one of my favorite tournaments ever since I came here. In fact, one of my goals in life is to play the tournament. I can't this year because I've had hip resurfacing, but I, it's a goal to play it. Maybe we can play some doubles. Let's let's create accountability partners. So uh, next year, you and I in the men's uh, 55 dubs. Uh, hip willing. Yeah. Hip willing. Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Just uh, you couldn't tell it from his smile and bouncing a step, but. Hip, uh, fresh off hip surgery. Eight weeks ago, I had hip resurfacing, um, and it, the good part is apparently that will give me a better chance at playing as yes. opposed to the total hip replacement. So, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, for me personally, out there on the doubles court, I'll take a one hip to Jeff over most mm -hmm. any other partner any day. Uh -huh. The man, the man. <laughs> you cover the lobs of the drop shots. I'll, I'll hold my space. <laughs> my lower body's feeling great, buddy. I'll sprint back. Um, well, so I thought what we might do is have a little theme today on senior tennis with okay. the Southern Senior Men's on us here at Vanderbilt. And um, let me just start by asking you, um, you know, we're both, um, I think you're 57, is that right? 59. 59, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, 59. And so a couple years older than me, I'm 55, soon to be 56. And we've talked a lot about how the game changes as you progress through the, the, the senior uh, tournament uh, scene. What are your What are your thoughts? Like, what are the keys to success as one ages and, and um, for continue not only maybe competitiveness in the game, but to keep up the enjoyment? Because uh, even if you're just playing recreationally, you see a lot of people fall off because of uh, injury mm -hmm. or frustration. I think you know gets the better of a lot of people. So, do you have any thoughts about how to stay um, in the game not only as a competitor, but maybe as a recreational player who's sure. going to keep up a, a good enough level to really enjoy being out there? Yeah, I think it's. Um even as our physical skills wane, we can still improve. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the few games I think you can get better older. Mm -hmm. You've improved in your 50s. Don Napier, who just played here this morning, mm -hmm. has improved immensely in the last three or four years mm -hmm. in his 60s. Mm -hmm. um, and change, I think you can grow your game, add things. Um, you know, you have to understand it's the same size court as when you were 20, but so you have to, there's some there's some court positioning differences. I think often you have to play up on the baseline or even inside it to cover the drop shot. Mm -hmm. You have to read mm -hmm. uh, read the ball. I think you have to understand what your opponent is trying to do. It's a little more of a chess match. Mm -hmm. um, I think a key to getting really good in senior tennis is taking incredible care of your physical being. Um, at the same time learning to enjoy competing and maybe having a little less uh, anxiety around winning and losing and it's a little more this is awesome that I'm in my 60s playing this great game and you know I mean I remember we have we had the 85 and over here a few years ago there were only three guys in the draw but it's just awesome seeing them play if I recall correctly Jeff I, I think I stood beside you uh, as a representative from the Tennessee and interviewed the finalist in the men's 90s a number of years ago uh -huh. and there was a comment to the effect of after uh, on, honestly a, what I, I mean this sincerely was a scintillating match mm -hmm. where yeah. uh, I think the fellow that won it was uh, down a set down a break actually came back you know recaptured that break in the second set went on to win that set and then a, a, a hard-fought tiebreaker uh, to come out on top mm -hmm. and if I recall correctly you, you you have a better memory than I do but I think the quote to the to the reporter from the Tennessean, who obviously when 90-year-old men are competing in singles tennis, this makes news. Um, I think the comment was, uh, well, you know, in fairness, uh, Bob has uh, lost a little mustard since he had that third heart attack, but uh, after I lost the lung to cancer, my, my aerobic fitness hadn't been quite the yeah, same. Yeah. And I think we both sort of said, hey, that's that's the guy we want to be. You yeah, know? no, I mean, <laughs> it, what I find fascinating about the Southern seniors, that's the one I get to see the most is the healthy aging yeah and you well, you understand that a lot of these it's a men's tournament i'd love to see a southern senior women's here too the men often have been playing since they were 10 mm -hmm. each other so they mm -hmm. know each other they grew mm -hmm. up in the south um you know it's just an amazing game for sort of lifelong friendship and relationship and mm -hmm. um you know the kind of fellowship and camaraderie you see in the in this tournament is, is just great 
Absolutely. It's a great atmosphere. And, you know, I've uh, played the last couple of years in the doubles and enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the lower body didn't cooperate. I, I think 2019 may be, may be my year. Uh, 18. 18. Sorry, 2018 may 18, be my year yeah. if, the, if the lower body is going to keep, keep up the good work it has the last few days. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you say, staying very physically fit. And I know you said to me when I was still in my 30s, uh, be first a good animal. Can you kind of elaborate on that? What did you mean by that? You don't want to be limited by a lack of physical training. Mm -hmm. And as we get older, I think flexibility it becomes really important. We stiffen, our joints get a little less less mobile. So I think something like yoga or really good stretching is key. Mm -hmm. uh, weight, just, just taking care of yourself. If there are extra pounds, try to get them off. Mm -hmm. That helps the joints too. Um, yeah, and also just prevention of injury because you know, it's tennis is tough, especially if you're playing a tournament where you're playing singles and doubles. It's so easy to get an overuse injury or maybe a tendonitis in the shoulder. And unlike maybe your teens or 20s where you can get over that fairly quickly, it can linger and really debilitate you. Right. Take you out. Take yeah. you out of the game. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I think we've both seen that over the years here. People who played quite a bit just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Can't play. Anymore. Can't can't really play. Uh, yeah. You know, debilitated in a way that keeps them keeps them off the court, which is which is unfortunate. You mentioned what about the kind of um, tactics and strategy side of the game uh, in the in the senior uh, ranks? You know, there's a there's a thread currently running on Tennis Warehouse, uh, the, the over 50 thread, mm -hmm. and uh, it's interesting some of the insights that people have shared there. What do you think, like tactically in terms of, or, or strategy and, and, and tactics, what would you suggest are some of the key elements in senior tennis, maybe uh, as opposed to in junior tennis or you know young adult tennis? That's a really good question. Um, drop shots are much more prevalent. Mm -hmm. The use of touch, just because movement, movement's probably not as good as it, mm -hmm. as it once was. Mm -hmm. um, you're learning to really move the opponent, understanding that if you hit a ball to a certain place, did you open up the court so you have to run more, or have you kept it to where you're not having to run so much? I mm -hmm. think that's a key, understanding those things. As I said, it can be like a chess match where you try to figure out what your opponent likes to do and take it away from them. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're trying to come in a lot, figuring out a way to keep the ball deep and keep them back. Um, if they're a real counter, kind of counter puncher and a defensive player, learning how to with accuracy, move them all around and maybe break them down mm -hmm. physically. One of one of uh, Jeff's many phrases that I've internalized over the years, and I, I, I want to be sure I get it right, Jeff will correct me, is it perverse empathy or reverse <laughs> empathy? Yeah, I say perverse, and what it means is you try <laughs> yes. to understand what your opponent does yes. not want you to do. Yeah. You have an empathy, you understand how they feel, and then you, you know, the Spanish talk a lot about making your opponents suffer. Yeah. So suffering. that's a, a lot of... Um, you know, that's good at any level. Uh, you know, and then I guess, too, you look a, a bit at some of the grips. Some people in senior tennis learned at a time when the Continental was in vogue. Well, the way to play a Continental is to go high to the forehand. If they have a one-handed backhand going up high, getting the, learning uh, how to loop a ball up high on either side can be very effective. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, I think you've got to, play more economical, efficient strokes and not quite so mm -hmm. kind of muscular and, and big, mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. you know, a little really efficient chips mm -hmm. and, uh, and mm -hmm. drives. Mm -hmm. Do you see people coming into the net? I mean, obviously, all of us in the 15 above ranks, uh, I personally hit very few ground strokes uh, yeah, you along see, the way when I was You'll see people, yeah. just, you know, yeah. trying to shorten the point and get in. Yeah. Um, you know, often on the second serve, people will drop it. Yeah. Or they'll chip it and come in. Um, you know, make somebody move into a corner quickly and, and pass. I think lobbing and getting back, a skill that uh, declines is the ability to get back and hit a scissor kick overhead, mm -hmm. especially in the 60s and mm -hmm. 70s. Mm -hmm. That's just an incredibly ballistic athletic move. It's hard mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, you know, you, you, just, you just factor in the body. You know, what it, what, uh, I think you study your opponent a lot too, and see how well they, mm -hmm. they maybe they move really well laterally, not so well up and back. Um, so yeah, touch is a little more important. Yeah, playing a little bit more intelligently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
and i think you know you've been generous to allow me to go out with your kids from time to time over the last number of years and to me one of the things i quickly learned was that i needed to use my experience to know where the ball was going to go and sure. to get into that position that they pretty reliably were going to yeah. get certain shots under yeah. certain circumstances and that sort of allowed me to maybe play where otherwise i couldn't it's a good yeah. point yeah. you know another skill i haven't really mentioned is you know, it goes against the grain of giving 100% effort, but every once in a while you just have to let a point go. Yes. You're at the net and they've hit a good lob, <laughs> let it go. Yes, I, and again, it's funny, <laughs> I'm laughing at that because I, I see that in the best players in the Southern Senior Men's every year, or every year, they know when to sort of concede just the point. Just concede the point. They simply will yeah. not run after every terrific right. drop shot that they're probably not going to get, and even if they do, the other person's going to be standing there to knock yeah. off the volley. Yeah. And um, and that's hard because we've ingrained. I know in sure. my youth, when I first started taking lessons with you and working with you, you would say, Craig, that you can get that ball. You think you can't get it, but you can get it, and yeah. sure enough, I could. And then now I'm, I'm learning, like, well, maybe there are balls I could get, but is it yeah. wise to get it? Is it wise? Yeah. yeah. So it's maybe that's one of the, you have the wisdom to know when to let a point go. Yeah. yeah. One of the things on Tennis Warehouse is always equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the equipment changes as you as you get older? Do you, are there are there things? I know you've become more and more enamored of the idea. Like you you gave a big shout out last time to um, Scott, you know oh. the the master racket yeah. technician who strings here and does a fantastic job. Yeah, I, uh, I think you get with a really good stringer and find uh -huh. out what strings, mm -hmm. what tension, uh, adapting to conditions. I was just down at the Winter Nationals in Orlando. Mm -hmm. and, um, Friday morning was overcast, gray, and drizzling on clay. That's, so you got to know how to play in that condition. On the clay court, you're going to play in a little drizzle and uh, loosen up the strings a little bit. Uh, just understand how heavy the ball is, that, 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 that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think stringing, the importance of, of a stringer is certainly much, mm -hmm. much, much bigger mm -hmm. than it used to be. Mm -hmm. I watch most of the guys in the in the Southern Senior Men's are playing with large overhead, uh, pardon me, oversized, oversized rackets. rackets yeah. With uh, and a lot of them do use poly, but they're they're using very low tensions. Yeah. Uh, you know, 30s e and 40s. Easier on yeah. on everything, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the new materials are easier on your arm than you know. And I and an interesting thing is I think technique as it was taught 30, 40 years ago is easier on the body than technique now. Amen. Yeah. And so I think that's why some of the injuries are, are like Djokovic's grip is a little far over, and I think it's why his elbow's bugging him. Yeah. So many years of, of hitting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I know I know you have work to do, and we're always grateful for your time. Thank you, Craig. No, absolutely. So let me let me throw out one last question. Okay. What do you see happening in 2018 in the in the professional uh, men's game? What's what's coming in 2018? You know, we're we're looking at the Australian coming up in two weeks, and it sounds as though there's some real injuries in the big four. Um, it could be a brand, a brand new slam champion. Um, you know, Federer is pretty unbelievable, but uh, could somebody young who's not been on that stage break through? Maybe. Maybe. You know, that's kind of what I, what I see. The interesting and, in a way, frightening prospect is what happens when these guys retire? Uh -huh. We've been so spoiled with the best four or five, six players, uh, really maybe ever. Ever, <laughs> right, um, right. And, and just incredible ambassadors for the sport, every one of them in kind of different ways. And I hope the next generation of, of stars can, um, you know, keep that legacy going. No, I was stricken by melancholy when Sanford's retired because what went through my head, honestly, at that time was we'll never see another player as great as Pete Sampras, that's it. This and is we the, have. And, and, and then <laughs> yeah. uh, literally a few months later, a fellow by the name of Federer sort of emerged out of nowhere. And uh, I think a lot of people were doubting Fed. And, um, you know, obviously he's, he's proven them wrong. So let's end with a shout out to a young uh, Australian player, not on the men's side, but on the women's side, I believe our own Astra Sharma yep. has found her way into the main draw. Main draw of the Australian, Australian Open, Open Grand Open. Slam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how about an that? An incredible accomplishment. I think it's uh, a great sort of, it's an achievement to play a Grand Slam, oh. to play it in her home country, to earn it through by winning a draw, winning through a draw. Uh, I'm going to fly down there in a couple of weeks and watch because it's not often you get a player in a Grand Slam. Amen, you don't. And, and again, um, 
we everyone here just admires and respects astra so much not only unbelievably physically talented but but also just my experience just a terrifically hard worker and sincere sweet person great great human I mean just a great human being so we we're all you know keeping our fingers crossed for Astra in that in that main draw and would love to see her do some damage I'll take pictures absolutely thanks thank you